In this video, we're going to define linear transformations. And you might be thinking, haven't we already defined those? Well, we sort of have. We've defined linear transformations from Rn to Rm. Now we'll define linear transformations from one vector space to another. The definition is identical though. T of a sum V plus W has to equal T of V plus T of W. For any two vectors, V and W, in the domain, and T of a scalar times V has to equal the scalar times T of V for any scalar K and any vector V in the domain. We do have a genuinely new definition now. The book presents two definitions, but one of them is old. We defined the range last time we talked about linear transformations and nothing about this definition has changed. Here is a genuinely new definition. The kernel of the linear transformation. What am I doing? Kernel with an N is all the preimages of the zero vector. So we've got our domain and we've got our codomain. And our codomain is a vector space, so it contains the zero vector. And at least one vector in the domain is mapped to the zero vector. Zero is always mapped to zero. But unless the function is one to one, there could be other elements in the domain that are mapped to the zero vector. And the set of all of these elements is called the kernel. The range and the kernel are presented together, but note that they're fundamentally different. in the sense that a transformation is from a vector space V to a vector space W. And the range is contained in W. And the kernel is contained in V. So they're sitting in different vector spaces. That being said, they have something in common. Theorem. The range is a subspace. It's a subspace of W. The kernel is also 
a subspace. It's the subspace of V. Let's look at an example of the range and the kernel. C1 is a standard vector space. This is probably the only time in this class we're going to use it, so you don't need to memorize what it is, but it's the vector space of continuous differentiable functions on the real numbers whose derivatives are also continuous, but not necessarily differentiable. And C is zero represents the vector space of continuous functions, which might or might not be differentiable. And if they are differentiable, the derivative might or might not be continuous. We'll define a transformation D from C1 to C0 D of F equals F prime. And I claim that this is a linear transformation. To be a linear, we need two things. And they're both elementary results from calculus. We need the derivative of a sum to be the sum of the derivatives, which is true. And if we have a constant times a function, and we take its derivative, that should be the constant times the derivative of the function which is also true. These are both results from calculus one. Having demonstrated that this is continuous, let's talk about the two other, sorry, having demonstrated that this is linear, Let's talk about the two other definitions we gave in this set of notes. The range and the kernel. The range is all of C is zero, all the continuous functions. And that's because suppose F is in C zero. Then if we take D and apply it to an antiderivative of F, we get F. So this function has a preimage. What about the kernel? The kernel is the set of all functions whose derivative is the zero function. And those are the constant 
functions. The derivative of a constant function is zero. <laughs>